Hey, Bub Nation, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson here. You know, the spring practice is underway for the University of Colorado football team, and tonight we're happy to bring you Discovering Durrell. You're number two for head coach Carl Durrell. We're going to hear from the head coach here momentarily and talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, the football team, getting ready for a second season, having spring ball, and all the fun uh, that uh, there is involved. But off the top here tonight. We want to quickly acknowledge, uh, as we get things underway here this evening, that just two weeks ago yesterday, our hearts go out to those impacted by the tragedy here in Boulder, Colorado. We know that many of our students, faculty, staff, and alumni live and work in the neighborhood where that event occurred. We are going to continue to offer our support to the Boulder community from the University of Colorado. We are bust together, shoulder to shoulder as always, and we hope that the event today can bring some light into such a terrible tragedy. Before we uh, get started... We would like to take a moment of silence for the victims and the families of those impacted. Again, thank you for that moment of silence for the tragedy two weeks ago yesterday here in Boulder. We welcome in now the head coach of the University of Colorado, Carl Durrell. Spring practice is underway. What are we, four practices in at this point in time? Four practices in, and, you know, things are moving along pretty well, and things are getting getting pretty good. All right. Well, it's just good to have – you know, I've walked out there for practice uh, two or three days of the four, I guess, and just the fact you guys are on the field, it's spring ball, the weather's been phenomenal, it just feels like it's the way it's supposed to be. It does feel that way. It's – you know, the players are excited. They've had a great off season working in the weight room with our new strength coach, Shannon Turley, and so they, they've done some r pretty progressive stuff with him. And they're excited about that process of how our off-season training has been and then kind of bridging that into practices. So they're pretty excited. So it's a, it's a good first four days of, of camp, and, and there's plenty of work for us to continue to work on, but they are excited each and every day when they're out there. I want to get into more of the football stuff coming up here. We've got an entire hour we're going to be chatting. We've also got some great features, by the way, with some student athletes and some alums. We'll get to those here in just a little while. First off, we call this Discovering Darrell. We've got to get to know you a little bit. So we want to find out a little bit about you personally. Sure. Uh, when, when you're away from football, you know, football is such an all-encompassing thing for you, you guys here in the coaching industry. So when you're away from football, what, what keeps Carl DeRoe busy? What, what are your hobbies? Do you have anything? Well, You can't say watching football either. No, me. well, my <laughs> wife will, will, will kill me if I say that. So, uh, definitely, I like to – I read a lot. You know, I do a lot of uh, – whether it's the audible stuff on, on, the, on the headphones and sure. I'm going on long walks you know, around the neighborhood or I'll read in my, in my office at home. But I like to read uh, on a lot of uh, bibliography type things. Okay. Um, but – Basically, it's it's really catching up on really what's going on outside in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can be a, an entire show in and of its own, I think. Sure. But are, are you do you like fiction type stuff? Do you read anything fiction? I do. I like some fiction stuff yeah. too. And you know, I, I used to be like James Patterson, all those types of sure. you know novels, uh, novelists. Uh, you know, those things too. But lately, since I've been in coaching and I'm, I'm a little bit more sophisticated in my career, I'm, oh. I'm an older guy now. Nice, yeah. So I try to learn and pick up on some tools and, and expectations of, of some great people that have done some successful things in their lives. So, okay. you know, I've Barack Obama, you know, Shonda Rhimes. Uh, so I do a number of book studies where just getting to know other people and the yeah. things that have made them successful. I'll put you in a spot. Would, would there be a book you'd recommend? To somebody, a book I would it. recommend, uh, David Goggins. I think that's the one that's, that's the hardest one. It's a he's a marine, and you know he's done um, a number of training uh, exhibitions and with triathlons and stuff like that. Okay. But you know he has a great book out that's you know it's about leadership and understanding the 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 expectations and the demands of when things get hard. Mm. Are you tough enough to push through it? So it sounds like a football theme, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, it's a I can't remember the title offhand, but it's okay. he's uh, he's done a he's yeah he's a, a former Marine, and he's done a tremendous job. All right, you know, ex just really going through his, you know, his experience. Sure, in life. because we've all got trials in life. Sure. So to be mentally tough and to find your way through, what would the average day? I'll ask you this question based on the off season, okay? Because I know during the season you are immersed in football just from head to toe. What would an average day in Carl Durrell's life be like during the off season? Well, I wake up about the same time every day. Okay. You know, so I'm a, I'm an early riser. So I'm a, I get up at five, 
I'm usually in the building before six o'clock, uh, whether it's off season, in season, or anything like that. So I'm an early riser. I think I've learned that from my my parents. My mm-hmm. dad was a naval officer, so we used to get up early to do chores on Saturday mornings. I was cutting the grass at 7 a.m. on Saturday mornings, <laughs> with, which I would upset a lot of my neighbors. I was going to say because I got the lawnmower going on at seven in the morning. They're like, "Why is that on?" But <laughs> you know, it was kind of that was the the regimen that we were brought up in as as young siblings. You know, in the Durrell household. Okay. Probably not a surprise, and and I think of all you know my working with with Coach Barnett, coaches even in the off season, you're regimented, aren't you? Very much so. Yeah. Drives my wife crazy, but we've been married almost thirty years now, so I think she just lets me do what I do, and you know I let she sleeps in. Matter of fact, we're complete opposites. She's okay. a night owl, and I go to bed by ten ten thirty at night because I'm I'm about done by the end of the the day and. And I get up early, and she sleeps in late. So we catch each we catch up with each other right around dinner time. So. Okay, let me ask you this one here: being a married man myself, who's the head coach at home? Oh, why would you even need to <laughs> ask that? I know that's that's Kim, right? Yeah, yeah, Coach Kim Durrell, right? That's right. Because you're gone most of the time, right? That's right. right? She's Someone's in charge of the house. We have two dogs and uh, we're two older kids. That they're, even though we're empty nesters, they're around quite a bit. So, yeah, she runs, uh, she runs the show. Who, who would you say has really influenced you? It, it may be from a coaching standpoint or, or from a life standpoint. Who, who would you say has really wow. kind of set the foundation for you? That's, that's, I'm going to have to give kudos to my, the guy that has got me in coaching, and that's my former coach at UCLA, Terry Donahue. Mm-hmm. He saw something in me as a player that he felt that I could be uh, have a lot of success in this profession of coaching. So um, he he was the first one that kind of twisted my arm about coming out and helping out in a practice setting. And 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 when I was able to do that and was on the field for the very first time and coaching uh, really some college, some former teammates of mine because I was a graduate assistant at UCLA, I was just hooked. I just it was so much fun and you know you saw guys improve and so I, that's what I got out of it it was just seeing guys improve their skill set and to and I felt like I was part of that so yeah. I, I was really hooked right, right from the start can you tell when you're coaching a team can you identify players and say you know what that might be a coach or this guy might be a coach oh for sure can you yeah absolutely there's a number of guys on our team that are that way Nate Lamb is going to be a coach yeah. if he wants to yeah for example he would be a a great coach you know um I would say Chris Miller, uh, Isaiah Lewis. Uh, you, you can almost say every quarterback has the ability to right. go into coaching if they want to because they have to study so much harder than everyone else. But, you know, some people don't like the lifestyle and the time commitment that coaching provides. But, yeah, there's a number of players that I've coached, a number of places that I've been that I felt like, you know, you knew that they had what it took, you know, to be successful in this profession. So no question. Is it hard? And here I'm sitting here thinking about, I asked you the question about at home. Is it hard being a coach who every single day is kind of dictating the way that a roster is going to go and what a team is going to do? Is it hard not to do that at home? <laughs> well, remember, the head coach at home, that's Kim <laughs> Durrell. I understand. So when yeah. I go home, I've asked a lot of coaches coach this question. I, I fall in line. <laughs> I'm the sous chef. <laughs> If she tells me to go <laughs> empty the trash, if she tells me to go clean this okay. up, I, I, I take orders pretty well, so I'm a good yeah. listener. I, I was going to say, though, that, that <laughs> might be, there, there might be some guys that might have a tough time realizing, okay, you're not in charge here. That's right. You know? I'll, I'll admit it. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I'll raise my hand, my right hand, everything. My, my wife's in control at home. No so, question. So I asked you, so Terry Donahue impacted you greatly. Is there somebody from a football standpoint, from a philosophy standpoint, from an X's and O's standpoint that really affected you somewhere along your career? Absolutely. You know, my, my first pro job uh, with the Denver Broncos here, you know, Mike Shanahan. Sure. So uh, we're, we're still uh, – you know, he's a great mentor of mine, and, and uh, I still talk with him, you know, uh, probably two or three times a year. We get a chance to visit, and I'm hoping to get a chance to catch up with him later after spring practice. But uh, he's been fabulous for me in my career. Gary Kubiak, who's part of that tree, he's, yeah. you know, he's been part of that as well. So, you know, I've had some fabulous coaches in my career that's helped me. What would you have done if you would not have become a coach? Well, I had a, a sales trainee, management trainee job out of UCLA – with IBM, hmm. that was my first entry level job right. opportunity, right. and then that's when Terry Donahue snatched me from those claws and brought me into coaching. <laughs> so I never did actually go through with that job. Okay, but uh, that was that would have been my first job. I, I really couldn't tell you what would what, what would I do outside really? of coaching. Now I can tell you what I want to do. Okay, I would love to be a culinary chef. 
Really? Yes. Absolutely love cooking. You reference that about being at home. You, you do quite a bit of that at uh, home? I do a lot of it at home. Kim does let me cook at home. Okay. You know, when I'm, you know, summer times, it's really my time to be the cook in the kitchen. So, you know, I like to barbecue or bake or, yeah. or you know, all those different things that we do around the kitchen. So I love doing all that stuff. Um, I thought about it at a time or two of going to, going to culinary school. Right. So I think I might do that after I'm done coaching. That's interesting. Yeah. You, you, you it would be, you'd be hard pressed, I would think, to think of something that would be that far removed from what you're doing for a living. I mean, that, that's something totally, totally different. One it is. It is completely different. But it's you know, cooking's interesting. It really mm-hmm. is interesting. Like the thing that I I marvel over and think about a lot is how to create different sauce yeah. sauces. You know, for different how the meat, tastes mix how, together. How, that kind how of to stuff? make it all. How to do right. it from scratch. Right. You know, it's easy to bite in the store. Oh, you add water in the packet, right? You mix it and you heat a boiler or something. That's the easy part. But I'm talking about from scratch, actually making sauces that go with poultry or steaks sure. or, you know, or fish. You know, I think those are, those are the things that I would like to have at the top of my head. Say, oh, I can make this sauce and this would be fabulous for this dish. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, like you see Emerald do. Oh, yeah. In some of the TV right. shows. He does the BAM and all that stuff. And, yeah, I, I, I'd love to be able to do something. You know, there, there's something the people I've known that have been involved in that industry – have been very creative people. Is there a creative side of you that, that is you know beyond that, artsy, music, those kind of things? Well, that's that's the challenge. You yeah. know, but people that know me know that I'm like you said, I'm very regimented, I'm very abstract, I'm very black and white, or there's no gray. It's it's all those things, and that's really my nature. But when mm-hmm. it comes to cooking, I do try to expand my thoughts about what about this, or what okay. if I do this, or what if I change the recipe this much and do it this way just because I think this might work better. Those types of things. So right. that does I have some creative juices, but not right. not uh not very much. Okay. Now let me ask you this. <laughs> so if if uh Chef Durrell was going to uh let's say this weekend on Saturday night he was gonna make a, a fantastic meal, what what would what would you want to get into? If you just carte yeah, blanche, you just open it up. Whatever I, you want I to do. love my wife. This is what we. Ch- this is the challenge because I love seafood, and my wife does not love seafood, and okay. I love salmon, and she yeah. absolutely can't stand <laughs> salmon. So, okay. you know, a lot of these things I've done it for myself, right? Yeah. And then I would make her some halibut or swordfish. She likes, you know, more of a okay. the the white meat of 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 the seafood yeah. you know she doesn't like uh oily or fishy type of meats but i i like to you know whether it's cedar plank you know putting it on the grill or whether you're sauteing it with with garlic and capers and all that stuff so mm-hmm. I, I like to experiment in doing a lot of those things can't, can't you see around the uh, champion center here uh carl and pasta jay sitting <laughs> side by side just talking cooking <laughs> yeah you know, there's no question Pasta J is going to be using a lot of garlic. Right? <laughs> There's no, no doubt about it. That's, that's, that's what it's I'll use for. some, but probably not at his level. <laughs> Outstanding stuff. Well, that's good stuff. Give us a little background on, on, on you and Kim. You, you talk about your, your lovely wife, Kim. Uh, you guys have well, been very long time. Kim and I met in my, my, first, uh, my first coordinator job, actually, mm-hmm. offensive coordinator job at, uh, at a 1AA school in, in Flagstaff, Arizona, in uh, Northern Arizona University. Yep. That's Lumberjacks. where she graduated. That was my first really, I think, management level job that I was really excited about. The head coach at the time, Steve Axman, I was his graduate assistant at UCLA under Terry Donahue. Mm-hmm. So that's how the connection all worked out. And um, so it was, you know, we started there and um, I brought her to Boulder. My very first Division One Power Five job was from Bill McCartney here at Colorado. Okay. So I went from Northern Arizona to here. Um, to work for Bill McCartney, which was obviously, as you guys know, was a fabulous experience for me. And ironically, though, you know, Kim came here. She was, we, we were engaged when we moved here. Mm-hmm. And we got married that summer. And we got married at Flagstaff Mountain right up here. Oh, yeah. On top of the Flatirons. Beautiful so spot. So when we found out, that, oh, that was named Flagstaff. And we said, well, that's pretty ironic. We met in Flagstaff. We, yeah. So we, we had an outdoor uh, kind of private wedding just right at the top of the the bluff there, so it was a pretty significant thing. I, I would imagine, uh, now that you've come back, you've probably made a trip or two up there. Absolutely. Yeah. been up there at least once a year just, just to go and stand up there and reminisce. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, see, the, this is the reason you dialed up Discovering Darrell tonight. We found out about he'd be a I know some interesting things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who would have, I never would have guessed it. I mean, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Good stuff. You know, one of the fun things we're going to be doing tonight, we've got a, a number of features we're going to let you guys see where a current player is interviewed 
by a former player, Makai Blackman, outstanding defensive back for the Buffaloes. And the guy interviewing him, by the way, is pretty good. Chris Hudson? Chris Hudson. Huh? Oh, my yeah, goodness. Jim, yeah, Jim you, Thorpe Award winner. Yeah, you want to talk way. about one of the great Buffaloes of all time. He was here for the Buffs in 1991 to 1994. In 94, as Coach mentioned, he was an All-American, won the Thorpe Award, and goes down as one of the greatest Buffaloes of all time. And one defensive back here talking to another defensive back, Chris Hudson, talking to Makai Blackman. That's good, man. How did you choose to see you? Mm, so my son, my freshman year, I played JUCO in California at uh, College of San Mateo. So I was just waiting for an offer. I played my freshman season. I did okay. And then um, the first staff, when I first got here, was Coach Mike McIntyre and Roper. So they are the ones who recruited me. And then they gave me an offer. I came for a visit. And it just so happened that, like, all the DBs, like, at the time, like, 2016 team, the year before I came up here, was, like, Chidobe, um, Tedrick Thompson, Akella Witherspoon, like they're all from California. So like, I guess I looked at that as like a sense of motivation, like maybe California to Colorado is like a pipeline and then they all went to the league. So I kind of like fed off of that for my decision. Okay. So you're a big time player, huh? Yes, sir. I hear you're a big time player. So I want to know one thing yeah. though. Now this is going to be off script. What's your meal before you, the night before game? Like, what's your, what's your, what's your, everybody got a ritual, right? What's yours? So this past season, I wouldn't say it's a meal, but like, I think I like, I like started to like try to get more calm, like see what would uh, like keep me more calm before games. So like going to like different hotels and stuff, they would have like tea, like tea packets. So like before the night, before the game night, I would get like, like a cup of tea and just sip on that like in meetings and then like I'll eat like some fruit or something like a little Sunday, but I wouldn't like try to eat too heavy so it wouldn't be on me the next day. But I think like the tea is like the thing that stick out to me. Like I I would drink like a little tea before like a cup of tea. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. So if you had to go to dinner with three Hall of Famers, man, at the table, you just want to be in their their um in their presence, who would it be? Uh, saying that I'm around Hagen a lot, I probably wouldn't add Hagen. Hagen, I'm already I already know about Hagen, so I probably do Eric the enemy. Uh, I'm I'm gonna choose you because you, I know you want to Thorpe and all that, so it'll be the enemy. You, I don't know to be honest. Like I really don't know. I know you. You uh, wouldn't be enemy off top. Right. Oh uh, man, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. What are you most excited about the, the fall season? I feel like uh, this upcoming season going to be a full season. So I don't know if people think this last season was a gimmick or just we just got lucky, but what we did. But I feel like we got something special to showcase. So I'm really just, like, excited to go you know, showcase what we do, what we're doing, because we're working hard this off season. <laughs> I mean, I so think most now you got a great coach and Coach Jarrell which is a great coach, man. He was coaching there when we was there. He's a, he's yeah. a, he don't talk much. He's a hell of, he's, he, he, he's, he's watching and he's a hell of a thing. And a note on that about uh, Hagen, man. Hagen is probably why I came there, him and Alfred Williams, just watching them play. Really? Because I watched Alfred play in high school when I was in ninth grade. But Hagen, when I seen him, man, I just thought he was the most incredible thing I ever seen just on the field. I was just, like memorized just on him about how he did things carrying that ball, how he made magic with it, man. So good luck this season, man. I will be out to a Thank game, you. but really appreciate good it. luck this season. I'll be watching, man. And I can't okay. wait to see you. I'm excited. But you you will remember these days for the rest of your life, man. You'll be telling your kids for the rest of your life of you going to Colorado, you'll want to bring them back up there to watch you. Do your, th you know, like they'll see your name up there. You know what I mean? Um, if there's any questions you want to ask me, you can. But um, I'm pretty sure uh, you got to figure it how out. How did you prepare drink. for like winning at Thorpe? Because that's like big. Like, what were you doing like after practice and stuff like that? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. Well, um, actually, I've been 
preparing since my freshman year. No, nah, I'm just playing. I um man, I didn't even think of it as winning the throw up. I didn't even know they had such thing to Dion figures. Um yeah. uh, had one to throw up. Um I really wasn't to that. I was a team guy. Um I wanted to show up every day. I always wanted to get better um for my teammates. Uh that was one thing. Um and in getting better, I figure if I can be the best at my position, then that's pretty much getting better for my teammates. Everything was about team. Everything was about team. Uh, any extra reps that I did, um, I did a lot of, I, I, I did a lot of extra work every day. I played basketball. You know, you have to do that to keep your foot, foot footwork together. Um, I went out, did W drills and different things. Of course, you can't overwork by yourself. Um, I always worked after practice because that's when you're your tightest, right? I don't care if it was doing 200 yards of backpedal, being comf being comfortable in that. Um, anyway, any kind of ways you can stay up on, on the ball of your feet, that's what I did. And anything yeah. extra, I figured if I want extra, I have to get extra because everybody deposits the same amount of money in the bank, right? When I mean by money, I mean effort. Or um, effort meaning that um, wanting the same thing at the game of football. Well, since I wanted more, I figured I had to deposit more. So that's from practicing, meaning any ball I can touch, um, I intercepted it. Even at practice, I practiced that. Everything made good habits. Anything at uh, at practice, if I try not, even we go on one-on-ones, I didn't want you to touch the ball. It was hard with us because we had a lot of great receivers. Guess what? I practiced yes, on them. And me and Westbrook would go against each other all the time. We actually were best friends. We're all best friends. And um, on the field, you probably didn't think so, you know, um, because I just wanted to win every time. I just wanted to win um, because that was – and he also wanted to win every time. So, of course, things had to give. But it's work day in and day out. It's just work, man. It's work. Watching film, um, uh, seeing what formation people – are in as far as uh, what your coach, I'm pretty sure your coach know, formation. And also, like Coach Darrell, he is a receiver coach. You understand? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, he's been working nice with us too, to, like based on releases you know, and all that. The thing is, you have to find them. And when you find them, it's all about playing smart. Because I've seen fast people, I've seen slow people play the same position you were playing, and I've seen both of them successful because of they being smart, watching film, looking uh, at those little things that have helped them do that have helped them be, succeed in that play because you only got what 50 60 plays a game to help them Dang, succeed yeah. and you never know what will come to you <laughs> you know what i mean so that's just it, that's just being ready all the time but taking every rep at practice serious every rep i don't care if the guy's not as um uh not as skilled as another guy of course you want to go with the skilled guy but sometimes you're going to get the guy that's not as skilled, might be a freshman. But guess what? It, it, treat him the same way. It's all work. It's all work. Yeah, all work. And that's the way you do it. It's all work. It's all taking work. it. It becomes a culture. Just don't knock down no balls. Go intercept it. Because yeah, catch next play. Yeah. It can bum yeah. you. You see what I'm saying? The next It'll play, the one, like, uh oh. I, right. That'll be the one that gets seven on you. So if you can touch it, pick it. That's just had it that culture and i promise you if you do it i do it you don't have to tell them you don't have to talk just do it it's Trust gonna be contagious me. yeah they're gonna say so why is he uh getting these picks let me see what he's doing it's a culture and then guess what he's gonna do they're gonna start working like you can i stay after practice with you just keep doing it and when they see the success guess what they gonna do they're gonna stay after and do it because the coach only have what two and a half hours to practice but you can practice on your own yeah. if you don't have class that evening. I know y'all got film study. Your own out, outside just of practice. try to get your stuff in, yeah. man. Most definitely. Yeah, go go before. Practice. Yeah, and just do your extra stuff. Of course, stretch and stuff. But just the more you deposit, the more you get out. Now, if you want to do like everybody else, then just I tell out. my son all the time: you deposit a hundred like everybody. Yeah. You can only get a hundred, but if you deposit five hundred, then you expecting four hundred more than. That hundred person. Uh, That's yeah. it. But you got to yeah. do the work. 
Yeah. So just remember that. Deposit cool. more, you'll get more. And that's the bottom line. Great to hear that conversation between the Mackay Blackman and Chris Hudson. Did, did you like the background there and Chris Hudson's Zoom call? That was his daughter's room he was in, by the way. Uh, I tell you, it's a fabulous room, fabulous <laughs> space, and he, obviously he's got to be a great dad. No doubt about that. <laughs> and, and speaking of great, he would say, and you were here uh, when he was playing. He, that's, oh, he was a heck of a player. Chris was an outstanding player. I, I love Chris, I mean, and he, he drove our receivers crazy. You know, yeah. he – he was a high energy, fast flying. <laughs> did, didn't understand what walkthrough meant. Everything was fast, and, yeah. and he used to piss off all the receivers because <laughs> we're in a walkthrough, and he's he wouldn't let them catch a ball. It's kind of like that Matumbo commercial where you see him. He's, <laughs> he's blocking like, everything. He's blocking everything. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, he would he wouldn't let anybody catch anything. So all the receivers would get all pissed off. But I loved it because he was so competitive. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Boy, Chris Hudson. Yeah, they just don't give away Thorpe Awards. You got to earn that. You got to be the best of the best, and he certainly was. Great to hear him talking with uh, Mackay Blackman. So we continue here on Discovering Durrell, the head coach of the Buffaloes. Uh, you mentioned Coach Turley uh, a little earlier in the program here. What a great hire for you, Coach. I mean, I, I've, I've talked to a number of coaches in the industry and certainly strength and conditioning people that rave about him. Tell me what you see in him and what you think he can bring to this program. Well, he's, he's done a tremendous job for us already for mm. the first few months on the job. And, you know, Shannon and I, I met Shannon uh, years ago when I was on a recruiting visit with my son to Stanford Uh Stanford was recruiting Chandler, and I came on the visit, so I was a dad sure. know, going on, on a visit, and I got a chance to see the facilities and meet the strength coach and other areas around the school, and I got a chance to watch him work. And at that time, I was, I was working on my first stint with the Miami Dolphins, so I was, I was there, and, and I was very impressed with what I saw. You know, I, I, I admired how their teams were always physical and tough, and they seemed like they didn't have a lot of injuries, and and they, they played their best football at the end of the season, you know, when Stanford was on those great runs. Sure. And, and I, just, I just admired him from the very beginning. So we kept in contact for years. I mean, and when I would pop in town or there's other coaches on the, on the, the Stanford uh, staff that I was very close with. And um, so when, they, when the opportunity came here, I came here last year, you know, just prior to, you know, getting ready to start spring practice, we were in such a hurry to kind of get things going last spring this time that I only made a couple of subtle changes with bringing guys on the staff to uh, to get us ready for spring practice and I knew that in the back of my mind I said gosh I got some point in time I would love to get Shannon here if I get the, the opportunity to get him and after this season we had a chance to kind of reassess everything in the program and and it was an opportunity I felt like it was the right thing to do mm. for us to get where we need to go and when I was able to talk with him, we shared a lot of information. You know, we were, we've talked on the phone for about an hour and a half just sharing ideas and thoughts and, you know, our vision of where we see this program going and how we would get there in the process and how it would work. And that's kind of how Shannon is, is built. He's a very systematic thinker mm -hmm. and plans well in advance. And he, he, he does a, something that's very unique that I think most people don't do. You would think in the strength industry – is that he, he goes all the way back to the end of the season next year in 2021, okay, the championship game, for us to be in that position and ready to go and playing at our best football at that point in time, he marches back through the season all the way through summer into the spring about what that process should look like. Wow. That tells you it's a little bit different in how he's, he systematizes his, his regimen and the training aspect of things. So, sure. so he's made a, such a huge impact for us already. Our players love him. Um, he just has such a great knowledge foundational base about strength training and also pre in injury prevention. You know, it, it's an interesting position that I don't think a lot of time the general public really thinks about. I, I thought in, in all my years of, of being around football and programs, college and NFL, that position, maybe especially in college, might be as important as any hire that a head coach makes for his program. Is that a fair statement? I absolutely agree. Between, the, I would say, having a, a great trainer uh, in terms of physical training with the strength and conditioning, yeah. and then I would say secondly is you know making sure you have the academic resources you need for sure. the college for our kids to be successful too, which we have here at Colorado. You know, those are two major uh, facets that I think are really important for us to be as good as we need to be. You know, one thing I'd like you to talk about uh, that I think was fascinating, and I, I recall last 
last year at one point you and I were chatting around one of the shows we were doing and you were talking about your your football 101 or football school that you put your guys through give folks an idea what that was all about and, and, and how basic you went and broke down the game of football to your players it was really basic. I, I wanted to know, I wanted our players to understand the game at a very, very detailed level. So, you know, when we, we named every position on the defense and on the offense, and when they've made certain adjustments, we, we talked about what those adjustments meant and, and why they, they make the adjustments and why the court, like for example, on defense, why the, the secondary has to correlate with how the defensive pressures work and, okay. and vice versa we talked about offensively particularly for the quarterback position the understanding safety rotations and making sure that once you pull the ball from the from getting the snap that your eyes are in the right spot uh, we're talking about coverage understanding coverages and diagnosing diagnosing coverages with receivers at a level that they should be able to see that from their first st first step off the, the line of scrimmage mm. um, we talked about front play for both the offensive and defensive fronts about offensive scheme for the defensive linemen, okay, why they like to run certain schemes versus certain looks, and the same things for the offensive linemen, why they want to use certain fronts to stop the run game and why, why certain fronts are stronger than, than other fronts. Mm -hmm. So we, we were very, very detailed on the basics of the game, in my opinion. I think what, what happens in college football a lot is that there's not enough football being taught because of these systems of offense that go fast, they, they go fast and they run a set number of plays, but they're not really giving a lot of information about th what they're looking at right. to, their, to, their, to, their, to their kids that, they're, that are in the system. So I wanted our guys to really understand how defenses play and then for our defensive players to understand what offenses are trying to do to you so that they can be able to problem solve and correct and yeah. fix things understanding what the other side of the ball is trying to do to you. Well, so we did a, that for six weeks. I was going to say, there's a difference, Carl, between I understand what my assignment is and what I'm supposed to do and why I'm supposed to do certain things, right? And, and Absolutely. That's, that's, that's what you were trying to get them to. It's ex and that's exactly what we're trying to do, is trying to get them to understand the big picture, yeah. you know, why things work together, you know, why the secondary and the front play work together, why the – offensive formations to try to dictate a defensive look, why that works together. So we're, we're trying to teach them the really some big picture items along with understanding your job and your responsibility. But we want them to understand that their job is just one of the 11 spokes hmm. of, the, of making this whole thing work. So they, they really enjoyed it. I mean, I think you're, you're seeing some benefit for that as we're practicing right now that they've, they've taken from the football school and, is, and they're bringing it to the field. Recruiting, the lifeblood of, of any college program, no matter if it's football, basketball, tennis, golf, it doesn't matter. You've got to get the athletes in here. Talk about that process here at Colorado. Now, now again, your first year was odd because of, of COVID and, and all the virtual stuff. How do you continue to, to grow in that area here at CU? Well, it's a never stopping ending process, mm -hmm. you know, for recruiting. And for recruiting is a 365 day job and you have to really stay up on it and you really the, the the challenge for these this last year and a half has been us not having the ability to go out and see the 22 class and the 23 class and the 24 class you know you're that far ahead in recruiting is that you're not just recruiting the, the kids that are coming into your to enter the your college program in the summer like the 21 class you're looking at classes that are beyond that. And that's really where we're, we struggle the most with COVID is that we haven't been out to really create the depth of recruiting yeah, the way that sense. we would like. But I would say for the most part, what helps recruiting is winning. What helps recruiting is winning and putting together a great product on the field, a, a product that people feel like there's a great foundation being done there, there's something special being done there. Mm -hmm. You know, they like what we look like. They like how the players play. They like – you know, the attitude of how we, we do things, you know, on both sides of the ball and how we exude ourselves as a program, those are helpful things. But winning's the biggest thing. We do a great job. Our staff does a great job of doing a lot of evaluation, cross-evaluation. I have every guy on our team or on our staff they, that are offensive coaches, they're cross, you know, doing cross evaluations with defensive players, and the same thing with the defensive coaches, they're doing cross evaluation with the offensive players. So we're really well versed in getting a lot of different types of opinion on players, 
And that helps you make the correct decision yeah. when you get to see both sides of the ball be involved in that process. Once the evaluation, once you get to the point where, okay, you focused on player A, player B, and player C, I had a coach tell me years ago, once you get them on this campus, take a look at it, you sell the University of Colorado, the great institution and facilities and all that goes on here. I had a coach once tell me there's no greater recruiter though than the guys in your roster right now. True? Absolutely. Because yeah. they've done, you know, they, they're the ones that get partnered up with them in, in the yeah. evenings and uh, in the times of where they're just them, you know, out, out and about around town, you know, asking questions on their own, not being kind of coached into saying certain things. So they're, they're, they're our best recruiters. They right. are. And our players right now, from a year's time since I've been here, have a fabulous understanding and expectation about our, our program, yeah. where we're going, how we're getting there. And they're doing a great job of really expressing those, those thoughts with these future buffs that are coming up. You know, one thing I know that, that you're very concerned about, it's – you know, certainly being a student athlete, football obviously, but, but you love the idea of growing men on your roster. And we're living in a, in a culture and a society right now where there's a lot of talk about social responsibilities. Mm -hmm. how, how does that play into your program? It's big. It's, it's just as important. you know. And I, I express that with the families too in, when we're recruiting their sons, is that you know, this football experience is not just football. It's also about you know, creating the best version of these young men you know, both on the field and off the field. So we're our our coaches know that we're great mentors. We're going to help our players be successful in any arena in life, and that's where we feel like we need to push our guys the things that they want to do and the things that they aspire to accomplish. We want to help guide them and support them on on, on trying to achieve those goals. Yeah. So I'm not the type of coach that says, you know, you want to be in engineering, but you know, football is a very time demanding sport I don't know if you can do that I'm not going to say that I'm going to say that yes you can do you can be an engineer and I'm going to point out a few guys that were engineers that were that were able to do it I'm going to give them success stories about yes it can happen it can work instead of mm, I don't know because of this time commitment and all that stuff I want our guys to feel like they whatever they want to do whether it's pre-med engineering school, you know, architecture, you know, and it doesn't matter. I want them to aspire to do great things because they're great young men. They do more things as student athletes than the normal student does here on campus. You know, and you talk about those great role models that they can follow. We've got a number of them here at the University of Colorado. They've been great football players and gone on to phenomenal careers in a vast array of different businesses. And to that end right now, I'm thinking of one right now because we'll get to another one of our student athlete uh, features right now where Terrence Lang, an outstanding defensive end for the Colorado Buffaloes, being uh, interviewed by Alonzo Barrett. You remember when Alonzo played here? What a wonderful young man he was. He's turned into a phenomenal and impressive, mature uh, man right now and making a big difference in his community. And this is Alonzo Barrett talking with Terrence Lang. Alonzo Barrett coming all the way from Vienna, Austria. I got current buff defensive end Terrence Lang here, and we're just going to chop it up and see. Get more to know Terrence Lang. Terrence Lang off in this thing. How you doing, man? I'm doing, I'm good. I'm doing good. How you doing, man? Glad to be here. I'm doing good. It's actually nighttime over here, so I uh, just put the kids to bed, actually, and just about to, yeah, about to get talking right here. So how's how's the grind going? You guys, you guys were just getting out of class right about now? It's, what, 2 o'clock? Yeah, I just got out of class not too long ago. Got workouts at about 4 o'clock. We just got into uh, into spring ball, though, going into spring ball and in workouts. It's been going good, though. There you go. There you go. Have you guys been able to keep a good momentum and a good team spirit going in, taking the season from what you had last year? Yeah, that's ball definitely the goal going. heading in the spring ball. The goal, keeping the spirit of the team up and having everybody on the same page and, and having everybody holding each other accountable the whole the whole thing with the team. We all trying to make sure we're doing that heading in the spring ball. That, and we all know that's a big part of it. But, uh, Good. So what made you choose the, the Buffs? Uh, I chose CU because it has a strong culture and tradition, really. The tr tradition and culture, like everybody that graduate from CU, I feel like is always connected. And then outside of that, I wanted to leave California and experience something different here in Colorado. So, Okay, I got another question for you. What is your best Coach Wilson quote? That was my D-line coach, so uh, 
I know he gives y'all gems every day. What, what's the what's the quote that stuck out in your mind if you could say it on camera? <laughs> if I could say it on camera, yeah. Let me. <laughs> I would say. Coach Wilson always preached to us to work hard. So he always tell us, like, you get what you work for, whether it be good or bad. So that's one of the biggest things that stood out to me. So, like, if you don't work, you get nothing. If you work hard, you'll get what you work for. So he preached that to us a lot. Yeah. And have have you felt the uh, difference in his approach to – to your previous D-line coach, what's been the biggest difference with that? Oh, yeah, there's definitely a different approach. I mean, the defense is different. Uh, the approach to how he's coaching us is different, but I'm very excited about the change. Last year, we got to taste it a little bit with a few games, but I feel like next year when we get to put it all together, especially with a year under Coach Chris's belt, uh, it'll be good for us. The style of play I like okay. in a attacking defense is a lot more fun. And, yeah, I'm yeah, definitely buying into there. what Coach Chris is preaching. Let me see here. Who is your biggest inspiration, period? Like who, when you wake up, when it's hard and you know it's 5 a.m., you got to get up and you don't want to, what message or what person is in your mind and in your spirit that, you know, keeps you going? Well, my why or why I keep going or what keeps me going would definitely be my mother. Uh, my mother worked hard and instilled working hard in me and to keep going and never quit. And I watched her do it. So I feel like I like, I got people that I have to make proud. And yeah, so every time I think about my mom, I keep going. And then my biggest inspiration, I have a cousin that played named Jimmy Verdon. He played for the Saints when I was about six years old. And that's what really made me start wanting to play football or want to go, you know, to the next level to play. So he inspired me a lot as well. All right. And have you set some individual goals for yourself for this upcoming season? Uh, yeah, I definitely have individual goals for this season. I want to. individual goals like very specific i managed i told myself to get like one sack a game that's the individual goal that i have there you go uh, i there feel like go. it's attainable and something that i could work hard and accomplish so okay you know you putting do you putting that somewhere daily as a reminder so it just sinks into that subconscious and gets planted in there sack a game a sack a game sack a game Oh yeah, I, did, I have a, on my mirror in my room, I have two goals right now is to get a second game and the other one is as far as school to get a higher GPA than I got last semester. There you so go. So I got those there two goals go. that are written on my mirror in my room. I see them That's every good. day. And what are you majoring in? I'm majoring in sociology. Okay. That's what I got my degree in. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, you're always going to get to see how people work and how they move and why they make it do what it do. But it's it's been very interesting. I enjoyed I enjoyed studying it. And, you know, I still use it to this day when dealing with people. So it's something you can always benefit if you're a people person and you plan on, you know, dealing with people, which you have to do in almost any situation gives you a good understanding, I would say. Let me see what else here. So. uh What's been your most memorable game so far? My most memorable game would probably be, be 2017 and 2018. 2018 we played Washington and 2017 we played, or it was 2018 and 2019. 2018 we played Nebraska and 2019 we played Washington. Those were two of the okay. funniest games I've ever been a part of. <laughs> It's always great to stomp out Nebraska. And I know that was a good feeling, though, because you know there was some pressure on y'all, right? Like, y'all did us proud, though. Like, for y'all to go 2-0 right. and <laughs> against Nebraska, and we can't, we don't know when we'll ever play him again, you know. We we proud of y'all for that one, you know. Y'all gave us some, some bragging rights on that one, and 
I know a lot of us were happy to see y'all handle business with them. So good job to all y'all on that one. That's that's a true salute in maintaining the order, you know. Oh yeah, we had to hold it down. So that's a great job, fellas. <laughs> Well, man, it's been great talking to you. Um, if I can tell you anything as an older guy, just make sure you're staying in each moment as much as possible. Like I said, this really is going to be some of your golden years. Um, and it, you truly don't understand it until you're, you're done doing it because, you know, you're going through so much and you're doing so much. You know, you really don't understand what all you're doing at the moment. So, um be proud about where you're at, what you're doing, um, and just try to soak up as many memories as possible, man. Just realize that those times aren't always going to be there. But you thinking about, did you make the right decision to do what you wanted to do in those moments to get where you wanted to go? You know, you're always going to think about, could I did this? Could I have done that better? So just make sure you're living in a space where you're leaving no doubts about the decisions you're making. And you'll you'll have a lot more peace right. no matter where the chips may fall for you sports wise. But uh I'm gonna be rooting for you a little bit more now, you know what I'm saying? Now that we got to talk, so you know, I'm gonna wish you the best of oh, luck. Oh yeah, appreciate that. Uh, tell Coach Wilson I said what's up. Um and then uh yeah, much love to all you guys. Well, it's Buff Great Alonzo Barrett talking with Terrence Lang, defensive end for the Colorado Buffaloes, back on the Discovering Terrell, the head coach, voice of the bus, uh, Mark Johnson. We should mention there that Alonzo was actually overseas, and uh, there was a little bit of Internet issues hmm. with what he was doing, but he's such an impactful uh, young man at this point in life, doing some mentoring and I think some ministry work, that kind of thing. Carl, uh, Terrence Lang is a fascinating young man to me. I mean, boy, he he's the kind of guy you want getting off the bus first. I mean, he looks the part, doesn't he? And, and how's he developing? He he does look the part for sure. You yeah. want him come, coming off that first row, coming down off the bus for sure. <laughs> but he's uh, he's come a long way in my, my year's time of being here. Yeah. He's, you know, he had his best academic semester in the fall. He had over three point, you know, in terms of the semester well, in the nice. fall. And, you know, he's really growing into his own. And the best thing about him, as you mentioned him t in terms of his phys physical proudness, is that, you know, I watch him work out. And he's just recovering from shoulder surgery, and mm -hmm. so he's able to run and stuff. He's not really re able to do all the lifting yet. But on the conditioning level, I mean, he's running with the defensive lineman, and he's lapping the defensive lineman. Wow. That's how athletic and fast this kid is. Yeah. So he's 290 pounds, 6'5", 290 and he runs like a deer. Mm. And so when he, I see him run, you know, we, they're doing some some sprints with the D lineman. He's like miles ahead of everybody <laughs> when he's running. And But it's an impressive thing to see because he's a fabulous athlete. We're hoping he, you know, obviously gets recovery from the shoulder surgery and, and gets ready to go for the fall because we think he's going to be, you know, fantastic. All right. Well, a coach that uh, – rather a question that coaches always get asked. we got to ask you about the quarterback situation, obviously. Sam coming back from surgery. You've got uh, Brandon Lewis who really showed us something in that bowl game. you got J.T. Shrout who has transferred in from Tennessee. Talk about that battle going on in spring ball. It's going really well. You know, Sam's there every day, so mm -hmm. he's, he's doing his rehab and he's doing his conditioning work, and then he's watching practice – you know, and he's uh, he's been a great leader, even though he's not even on the field and participating right now. And that's the one thing that shows you a lot about Sam Neuer yeah. in terms of him being a team guy and all that stuff. So he's very encouraging with all these guys that are repping, you know, at his position. And, you know, Brendan Lewis is a completely different player than where he was prior to the Texas game. He, has, he plays in the Texas game, plays well, and he's completely different even to the point now where – he, he has so much poise, so much command, so much confidence that he's a different player than what we saw last fall. So he's having a really good start so far. I think JT is, is having a fabulous start as well. He's catching up to our system, yeah. you know, learning the new terminology. And the football schools really helped him a lot. Both of those guys have great arms, very good athletes. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's that position has changed completely. Mm you know, in a year's time, you know, and then we get Sam back by the summer. So we got, we got a pretty healthy, stable of quarterbacks. You know, it's funny you say that about Brenda Lewis. So standing out at practice the other day and Brian Cabral walked over buffs legend and we're standing there talking. And I said to him, you know, looking at Brenda, I said, isn't it amazing when a guy gets a little confidence and starts to understand, you know what? I belong at this level. As you said, he's got a different demeanor. He kind of carries himself differently. Absolutely. And he, the players rally around him too. They have a lot of confidence in him. I mean, it's really more important that he's very confident in himself, but the, the sure. players see it. 
So they have a lot of confidence in him too. So, you know, I think we're going to have a really, really good football team. And I think that position is going to be really solid. You know, Sam's going to come back better than ever as well. So it's going to be interesting how Sam gets back into it. Sure. You know, that's where we're all going to, you know, that's the question mark in terms of recovery from the surgery. How is he going to, how is that affecting his throwing motion? All those things. We won't know that until we, we actually start doing that. But Sam's not going to let that position down very easily, though. I know he's going to battle his butt off. I bet not. It's a great position to have a lot of competition. It sounds like that's going to be the case this fall when that season rolls around and camp gets underway in August. Yeah, our next player alum interview is kind of a fun one. Dimitri Stanley is becoming a star for the Colorado Buffaloes. And by the way, just recently he's been added to the roster for the track and field team here at C you and he's being interviewed by a buffs great a guy that uh, we all love mike pritchard who was one of the greats in colorado history went on to a wonderful nfl career has worked many many ball games with us in the colorado football network and i was doing some media stuff both on radio and television in las vegas so uh, one great wide receiver talking to another great wide receiver mike pritchard and Dimitri stanley all right um hey this is a pleasure for me i get to talk to uh, one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player right now on the CU roster, Dimitri Stanley. What's going on, man? I'm doing great. How, how about yourself? I, I'm hanging in there. I am. Um, excited for you, though. Excited for the Buffs this year, for sure. Um, I, I want. I mean, I kind of know your background, but I, I want to explore something with you that I, I never really asked you. Um, was because I know you're a multi-sport star uh, growing up, basketball, track, and, of course, football. What, what made you choose football? Like, what was the deciding factor for you? Honestly, I just felt like football was where I was best at, and uh, having a dad that had that past experience, uh, that was kind of the path that I chose and the path that I wanted to follow. So um, I think that was what – made me determine that I wanted to keep on playing football uh, instead of choosing that basketball route. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tell you what, uh, and you had an amazing, your dad was an amazing athlete for sure. We all know who the great Walter Stanley is. And, um, you know, from an inspirational standpoint too, I mean, you, I mean, you chose the path of football. So I'm going to assume that that was your inspiration as well. Talking about your dad, Walter Stanley. Uh, yeah, that was an inspiration for sure. I think I've always wanted to kind of follow in his footsteps and uh, see what if I could beat him or do better. And um, yeah, this is kind of where I am right now. So yeah, yeah, break his records over there at CU. I mean, is that why you chose CU too? I mean, he's got some records up there still, and uh, now you're at CU ball in that wide receiver position. Yeah, he his records are up there, but I'm I'm definitely coming after him. I'm trying to see what I could do this year or this upcoming season, and uh, I honestly just want to get more explosive, uh, faster, quicker. Uh, just kind of taking all those tools and sharpening my tools um, so that I can just be the best player that I can be uh, this upcoming season. I want to be able to uh, be someone who a lot of people see as um, a top three receiver in college football. Um, so I'm definitely trying to prepare myself to just ball out and uh, have an amazing season and uh, continue my career in football. Yeah, I mean, we all want to see that too, Dimitri. And I want, one of the things uh, I want to highlight right now uh, is you're one of the best route runners that I've seen in college football. Uh, so where, where did you learn how to run routes? Is that still a work in progress from you or or can you tell everybody where you learn how to run uh, routes in, in football? I mean, I'm always trying to find new routes, new ways to run routes. Um, but it, it really started with my dad, honestly. Um, in my youth days, he, I mean, we worked, we would go out to the park and work the route tree one through nine um, and just get better and try and perfect every single route that we ran. And then when I got here, I uh, had a couple mentors, uh, Katie and Visca. Uh, they kind of pulled me along, showed me, showed me the ropes, showed me what works against college DBs, what doesn't. Um, and then Coach Chev, he he does a good job at um, trying to kind of like teach teach new techniques and uh, just ways to beat DBs. So, but I I I'd still study um, guys that I think are really good route runners in the league right now. Um, I like to watch, sit down, watch some of their film and kind of go out maybe the next day, maybe that same day and kind of 
see if I can do some of the things that they do. So. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Always trying to perfect yeah, like your craft and always trying to be great. Uh, I mean, I think buff fans can appreciate that, Dimitri. Uh, one more question for you uh, in, in terms of coaching guidance, like what's been the best uh, coaching advice somebody's given, given to you? Honestly, at this point in time, I'd say the best coaching advice is just play with confidence and play with that that dog mentality that I'm the best player on the field um, and nobody could stop me because at the end of the day, uh, I believe that the only one that can stop me on that field is me. So um, that's kind of the best advice that I say I've received. Oh, man, I love it. I love it. Uh, one, my, my glory day is out there at CU. As a receiver, I got uh, some great advice from Coach Mack, and it was uh, find a way to distinguish yourself on the field. And that's never left me uh, because I've always figured, OK, if I can separate myself from somebody else, then all of a sudden now everybody's looking at me. Right. Uh, and so I know that you have that in you, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. I'm going to use absolutely, that one, too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, do it. Take yes, it. Sir. Use it. It helped me, man. And so. Uh, and again, I, I think you got a bright future. I know your work ethic. I, I know your goals. And, and I tell you what, Buff fans are going to be uh, happy this fall to watch you balling out on the field at Folsom. Yes, sir. I'm excited myself. So, Well, fun watching those two outstanding wide receivers talk to one another. Mike Pritchard, as good as uh, has ever been here at the University of Colorado. Dimitri Stanley, who's, uh, boy, you got a young player there that's a, a legacy player, by the way, who uh, really is, is coming into his own, isn't he? Demetrius having a great camp so far, you know, so far this spring. And I, I feel like we didn't utilize him enough mm. last year. Good, good bowl game. Played really well in the bowl game. We just – we need to get him more targets, get him going a little bit more because, yeah. yes, he's a fabulous player. Boy, you have got – speaking of, of wide receivers, uh, that wide receiver room you've got is pretty, pretty impressive. That's a good-looking group of young guys you've got on this roster. It is a good-looking group, and they're growing into it. And I think – you know, Katie Nixon was a great leader for us last yeah. year. And, you know, now, as you, as you know, he's he graduated and he's playing at, at FC right now. But I think when that happened and, and when that departure happened, I think we were, the players felt like, wow, KD's not here anymore. But then I think on the second part of it, when they thought about it, it's like, you know what, this is our time. Yeah. This is our time to shine. It's time. It's our time to step up and be leaders and stuff like that. So they, you know, Levante and Dimitri, those guys have done a great job of just stepping into those shoes and creating great leadership for that young group. You know, the, the running back position, I think, is an interesting spot to watch during the spring for you guys as well. I mean, we, there, there's one name that, that kind of uh, you know, everyone knows above the rest of them, but there's some depth there. And Alex Fontenot coming back for you. And that, that's going to be an interesting, I think, position to watch for your team, isn't it? It will be. And, and I'm so excited to have Alex back. And he looks great. He's yeah. working. He's running. He's working hard really well. And, you know, he's doing some really good things. Jarek has shed his brace, by the way, in right. case everybody wants to know that. he does. He's not wearing that brace anymore. Says he's faster now. He is faster. He looks good. So those two guys have been great. Deion Smith is – he's on the mend. He'll probably be ready to go by training camp, you know, so he's not doing much. Uh, but Ashad Clayton's here, and, you know, he's had a good practice yesterday. Is really catching up on things. So it's a good stable of young backs there. there. We're really – you know, we're really fortunate in that, with that group. What do you want to see by the time we get to that uh, spring showcase coming up uh, late this month? What, what, what do you want to accomplish for your football team as you send them out uh, for summer? The biggest thing is to make sure we're really salty about the basics, the cores of our systems on offense and defense. You know, we're not going to do everything. We're not throwing everything in the playbook at them this spring, but we want it to be a great foundation so they're, they're confident going into summer and training for that next session about ready to go to training camp, which we'll do much more. So uh, right now is just to have a great foundation in the systems, really build the depth of our young players. We had some, some incoming freshmen that entered this spring semester, so they're practicing right now. Mm -hmm. Get them, get their feet wet, get, get some knowledge base behind them as well so they get something they can carry into the summer. So the biggest thing is – Get it, getting our core systems down, developing our depth, and then when training camp comes and we're all ready to go from a great off-season training program, we're out there competing, putting together the best team for the 2021 season. Lastly here, we've got one more of our alum player interviews that we're going to see here momentarily. Carl's just about done here on Discovering Durrell. 
We're going to hear from Nate Lama during this uh, interview we got coming up here. Give us an update on him. When you'll see him out there, and he's not practicing. He looks fantastic right now. I'll tell all of our fans, he looks fantastic. He looks like he should be playing right now, but he's not. <laughs> so don't even go through there and ask that question or anything. But <laughs> Nate's in great shape. He looks great. Uh, he's got a great mindset about where he's going. He feels good about where the rehab s- situation is for him. He's ahead of schedule. Um, he's going to be ready to go for sure by the fall and before we start training camp. So, but he looks great. He's been he's been one of our best leaders, and I think he likes our new defensive scheme. Nice. I really do. I think yeah. he really likes how we're an attacking defense. We're going to allow him to play downhill like he normally would have done. But we also have some extra pieces around him that he's going to feel really confident that our defense will be different than for this next season. Well, I fibbed. He just sparked another question i got to ask you. With, with Chris Wilson moving up to the, the defensive sure. coordinator position, I, you know, I've known Chris for, I don't know, 25 years and always been a huge fan of his. What difference do you see with, with Chris and, and, and what he brings now leading that side of the ball for your football team? We're, we're an attacking gap control defense. Love it. We just get after people. Uh, we're not giving our offense any breathing room right now <laughs> <laughs> in, in spring training, but – but that's a good thing because you know, yeah. it's going to get our offense to play aggressive and to be more, you know, taking a lot of that, you know, that pressure that they're trying to provide against us. But, you know, Chris has done a great job of just instilling his confidence, instilling his, his, his way of, of, of standardizing our style of defense. Okay. And that's preached every day. Our players have bought into that. And they're doing a fabulous job so far after four practices. Love to hear that. Big fan of Chris Wilson's. What a great uh, addition in terms of position, uh, him being the defensive coordinator for the Uni- University of Colorado. This has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm looking forward to? Uh, the Carl Durrell cooking show that we're going to do at some point down the road. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'm looking forward to it. I'll put a little GoPro on and get that just Derek over here. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll do that for sure. Yeah, Love to. If you weren't with us from the beginning of the show, you got to go back and watch to find out what we're talking about. Coach, congratulations. Good luck uh, the rest of spring. And I can't, we can't wait until this stadium right behind us here is filled up in early September next year. Absolutely. And we all can't wait for that. And yeah. I let their, our fans know that you're going to see a fabulous team that's going to be really, really hard playing. And we're just like anything, there's low expectations that people are saying about us, mm-hmm. but that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We got our own motivation and we're going to put out a great product again going into 2021. Well, we're looking forward to it. Carl Durrell starting his second season as the head coach of the Buffaloes. We've got one final interview with one of our alums and one of our current Buffaloes and some housekeeping duties. We'll take care of the other side. But, you know, there's a phrase that says great knows great. You want to talk about a couple of great linebackers. You've got a Buckus Award winner, Matt Russell, who, of course, went on to an NFL career, spent many years with the Denver Broncos, talking with another great buff, Nate Lamon. Let's go ahead and get started, man. Tell us, uh, tell us your background. Tell us where you're from and tell us about your family. Sir, so um, I was born um, in Zimbabwe, Africa, a um, little town called Harare. Um, I moved here when I was four years old, so in 2002. Um, I moved to the San Francisco area, um, and so I, I was born in Africa, but I grew up in California. Um, the reason we came over here was my dad is a, um, an engineer, an electrical engineer, and he works for a global company, and so they just decided to relo- relocate uh, me and my whole family. Um, so that would be my mom, um, two brothers, and an older sister, and I'm the youngest of four. Tell us about your family and tell us about some of those studs that uh, you have for siblings, and, and uh, your dad was quite an accomplished rugby player as well. So go ahead and talk about your siblings and your, and your, your folks a little bit. Yes, sir. So um, my brother who's closest in age to me, his name's Brendan. Um, he was a tight end. He played at ASU. Um, big kid. He's Six seven. He's probably he's the biggest kid in the family. Um, super talented uh, football player. And then I have a, my oldest brother. He he's a runner. Um, didn't didn't end up playing any collegiate sports, but he's now a police officer uh, in Reno, California. And then my oldest, uh, which is my sister, her name's Ocean. Uh, she swam at Oregon State and um, is now a personal trainer and still living in Oregon. And then my dad. Um, he played professional rugby. Well, he first he played collegiate rugby at uh, University of Cape Town down in South Africa. Um, and then he got a shot and played some professional rugby for um, the Zimbabwean national team. Very cool. That's a pretty accomplished family, man. That's really cool. Uh, tell us how you got into football. So you, you got a little rugby in the background. You got, sounds like, uh, some swimming um, you got a big brother that was a tight end on the other side of the ball. How'd you end up playing linebacker and then how'd you end up picking football? 
so I started playing football when I was seven. Um, when we first moved to the States, um, you know, we couldn't find really any prevalent rugby programs around the area where we were living. So football was the next best thing. Um, we all started playing the, at the same age, around seven, for the same Pop Warner team. Um, and at, back in the day, I was, you know, I was, you play both sides of the ball. So I was a running back and the DN type guy. Um, kind of just moving around all over the ball. And then eighth grade is when I really started playing linebacker uh, for my last year of Pop Warner football. Um, and then as I transitioned to high school, that's that's where the coaches put me. Uh, I didn't have the the quite the skill set that I needed to play the offensive side of the ball at that age. Um, and they basically told me just run and hit. And um, that's kind of my best attribute is just – you know, having that nose for the ball and being able to hit. And I've been able to do that ever since I was, you know, playing at seven years old. Yep. You're a great space player, Nate. You're good. You're, you're a heck of a linebacker, man. But it's, it's, uh, it's easy to find those pluggers between the tackles. That's what I was. It's hard to find those yes, guys sir. who can make plays on the boundary and make plays in coverage. And you make a lot of plays all over the field. So it's fun to watch. Yeah. When, uh, when, when, when you were a kid, you know, you lived out on the West Coast. Any of those teams out there, 49ers, Raiders, anyone like that that you kind of, you know, aspired to play for? Or any players that you aspired to play like? Yeah, so, you know, most kids follow their, their team, uh, their parents' teams. And so my parents not being from here, we didn't, they didn't have any specific team that they followed. So I was kind of just a local kid, jumped around between the 49ers and the Raiders. Um, it didn't really matter who was playing, just as long as one of those two teams was winning on that weekend. Um and then as far as, you know, role model, um, back in that time, I used to have um, a bunch of jerseys, a Ray Lewis jersey. Um, uh, and, you know, he was also – he was one that I watched um, constantly and, you know, always pulling up YouTube videos. And um, now that I've gotten older, it kind of blossomed into Luke Keekley And, um, you know, Ray Lewis being a Hall of Fame player, I see, I see that same future for Luke and – um, he, those are two guys I really like modeling my gameplay after. Well, I'm going to tell you what, the Luke Keekley uh, comparison is a good one because that Luke Keekley is probably one of the most instinctive linebackers that's ever played the game, in my opinion. And, and, and you're probably, probably right there with him in terms of instincts, being able to find the ball. And I always call it making good decisions when you get to the block point. Guys that make good decisions make the play. Guys that make bad decisions don't. And they're usually the ones that aren't instinctive. But you're an instinctive player, man. You uh, you get that going for you. That's something that you can't teach. So, what are you looking most forward to? I know you're coming off the I know you're coming off the Achilles injury, and uh, tell us where you're at uh, in your progress in terms of your rehab and and what you're looking most forward to heading into the 2021 season. Yeah, so the rehab the rehab is going a lot better than I thought. Um, I'm actually ahead of schedule. I've been running for the past two weeks in the underwater treadmill and. After this week, they'll move me to, um, you know, the Alter G, which is just modified body weight running. Um, so I'll, I would say I'm about two, three, maybe even a month ahead of schedule on that term. Um, and looking forward to most is just is just getting back out there on the field. Um, you know, my time was cut short last season. And, you know, you always hear coaches talk about you never know when your last play is going to be your last play. So um, you know, I'm blessed that I have another opportunity to get out there and play again. And um, that's what I'm most, most excited to do to do is get out there, just be on the field and um, hopefully have some fans in the crowd this year. Let me, I, I want to, let, let's go back to football real quick, Nate. I want to, I want to talk to you. I want to, um, I want to hear why you chose the University of Colorado. Like uh, I know um, in reading your bio and, and doing some work on you, you know, you were a pretty highly recruited kid. I do know this and I can't, and I wish I could tell you who it was, but someone that recruited you told me, that even though you were, you know, you were the fifth, sixth, seventh ranked outside backer in California, that kind of thing, they said they knew hands down you were going to be the top outside backer, inside backer coming out of high school that year in California, and felt super fortunate wow. that we got you here at CU. And uh, but but really had a lot of a uh, lot of promise or opt or uh, uh, promising optimistic things to say about you and your future. But uh, how'd you pick how'd you pick CU? So it actually started back when my brother was a freshman at ASU. Um, he was a true freshman at that time, playing playing on and off mostly special teams. And uh, me and my family flew to Boulder for a game that he was playing here. Um, and I just remember 
you know, at that time I was a sophomore in high school at, and I was like, dang, playing with my brother at ASU would be cool, but this is a place where I'd, you know, I feel like I could live for a couple of years and, um, you know, really enjoy, really get the most out of it. Um, and then it, it just had those positive things like the outdoors, going to be able to fish. Um, at that time, I thought I'd be able to snowboard while I was here and do like that kind of stuff, but I realized that's not, not a viable option uh, when you're playing D1 sports. But, um, yeah, and, you, you know, the coaching staff you... at that <laughs> yeah, exactly. At that <laughs> time, um, you know, the coaching staff that recruited me, um, I felt strong connection with them. And um, one thing that I always tell people that kind of reaffirms my choice to come to see you is that I've been through so many coaching changes and so many, um, you know, different scenarios in that, in that regard. But the main thing that stayed true is the University of Colorado and the fans. And um, this place has felt like home through all those different types of scenarios. Good deal. Yeah, it's a great place, man. You're in a, you're in a, you're in a special spot. Well, I'll tell you what. From from uh, us former guys and old guys that enjoy sitting in the stands or watching on TV, you, you've uh, you've had a heck of a career, and it's been a lot of fun to watch you. And uh, and uh, and again, you it's it's kind of a it's a deep club. There's a lot of guys that have had good careers up there that same played the same position that you and I have. And uh, and I can tell you. Can, you know, I think I can speak speak for all of us that uh, we've had a lot of fun watching you, and and I look forward to uh, another year or two, and and watching you wrap your career up and move on to the NFL because you're going to have a successful career in the NFL as well. But uh, anyway, great chatting with you, Nate, and uh, it's been an honor to talk to you. It really is, and uh, and congrats again on on what's been a great career, and uh, and and finish her up in 2021 with a, with a big year. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. It's great talking to you as well. Butkus Award winner Matt Russell and Nate Lamon, who last year was in a running for the Butkus Award and should be again in 2021. Great to see a couple of those great Buffaloes talking. As for all of those segments tonight here on Discovering Durrell, hope you enjoyed the program tonight. It was fun sitting and talking with Carl Durrell, seeing the uh, alums interact with the great players. It won't be that long. We've got the uh, showcase coming up on the 27th, of course. The schedule, you've seen it by now. It's fantastic. Opens up against Northern Colorado. Ed McCaffrey and the Bears will come to the Folsom Field on September 3rd. Then you've got the game at Empower Field of Mile High with the uh, Texas A&M Aggies down there. That's going to be a fun one. Minnesota, the Golden Gophers coming. And then, of course, the Buffaloes will jump into Pac-12 conference play. A couple of housekeeping uh, issues to uh, get to. Uh, season ticket renewals went out on Tuesday, March 16th. Don't forget to renew by April 30th. Today is uh, the 6th, so you got about a little over three weeks to get that done. Also, that game we mentioned at Mile High Stadium with Texas A&M on September 11th. That is not included in your season ticket package, and you're going to have to renew uh, to uh, be able to buy through CU tickets to that ball game. Uh, ticket information, by the way, will be forthcoming. You'll get an email for joining us tonight. A couple of other things. On April 8th, Buff Nation, you're asked to uh, give by supporting the uh, Buff Club Day of Giving. Again, that's coming up on the 8th. You're going to get some information on that. Again, you're going to get an email uh, forthcoming here in the next 24 hours or so regarding a lot of that information for the Buffs One Given Day, and uh, you can take advantage of that as well to help out the athletic program. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap things up tonight. It was a great conversation with Carl Durrell. Great to hear from the players. Uh, we hope you'll join us uh, next time for the CU Spring Football Showcase on the 27th. We're going to hear more from Carl Durrell at that point in time. Also, our coordinators, Darren Cheverini and Chris Wilson as well. Can't wait to have football back at Folsom Field. Things seem to be moving in the right direction. We heard Athletic Director Rick George the other day say he's uh, cautiously optimistic that we'll have a full house at Folsom Field once football gets underway this fall. Thanks for joining us, though, tonight on Discovering Durrell. Our thanks to head coach Carl Durrell and everybody in supporting the program. I'm voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. Again, we look forward to this fall where the Buffaloes will open up season number two under Carl Durrell here at the University of Colorado. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night, and go Buffs. 